I was having a conversation yesterday afternoon. I got an urgent phone call. It wasn't an urgent phone call. It was my mate Tina Nixon, who you know comes on the platform uh, from time to time, and she said, give us a ring. And I gave Tina a ring, and we had a conversation which is related, uh, has related, has resulted in a column that is going to be published on the platform later today in our um, opinion section uh, by Tina. Um, and I think the word snappy, as in snap election, is there. And I want to background and say I've been hearing rumours and rumbling since November of last year about something happening in March and public servants inside Wellington being prepared for something in March. And uh, I think in an interview with Winston Peters, he talked about something in March. Um, and I talked to him, he said, oh, I've just been hearing rumours about something in March. And could that thing be, and I'll just say I ran a Twitter poll yesterday that is still running on my private Twitter account. Do you think Labor will call an early election? And at the moment, yes, 38%, no, 62%, 811 votes. Um, but I think it's a real possibility, and I think Tina's uh, column um, suggests that it is going to happen. What's your thinking? She joins us now. Tina, how are you? Sorry for getting you up early. Oh, I'm sort of up. <laughs> all right. So broadcasting from bed, I don't don't paint a picture for us. That's all I need to know. Uh, you were going to be on a little later in the program, but because of the storm, we had someone, I think, got, got tied up in storm and cyclone-related matters and couldn't join us. Okay, Tina, uh, I published this because I think I've got a... My spidey senses tell me you're probably right. Um, why do you reckon Chippy will call a snappy? Well, I think these guys have been in planning mode for a lot longer than people have anticipated, and it was some information that sort of came um, a across my desk uh, last week where it's been evident that there's been some planning to dampen down uh, public expectations around shitty policies. Um, and one of these things is um, the co-governance stuff. So the government has been actively dampening down some of the stuff around co-governance for some time. So if government departments had come up with a, a good idea that they thought um, might work around co-governance, um, then it has to go through the Crown Treaty, what is it, Crown Partnerships Office, and they have been advising people not to go ahead with that. So they've been managing public expectations for at least six months. So that means they've been planning stuff um, on how to, how to get elected again for a lot longer than people have anticipated. So the announcement that Jacinda's out the door, um, I think, has, has, um, has been planned for quite some time. Yeah, I don't and disagree on that, Tina. Yeah. Yeah, and and if you, and I'm like you, we're reasonably well sort of stitched into the um, beltway, and everyone you talk to is talking about um, uh, something in March and the possibility of a snap election. Then you've got the rise and the rise in, po in the polls of of Hipkins, who turns out to be um, everyone's new hero. Uh, and his positive ratings in the late, latest Curia poll would indicate that uh, he's doing very well on the, on that um, that first sort of run out. Um, and whether it, he's just a, a, a dead, dead, dead cat bounce, as they call it, uh, or he's going to cement that position as a favoured leader, um, that's the bit to watch, I think. And if he does... Uh, then I think um, they'll be ready to go, especially if they come through a crisis like this reasonably well. And let's face it, this, this country's... Yeah, um, but no one could uh, have planned for, for Gabriel, could they, for the storm? No, they couldn't have planned for that. But they, there is definitely a feeling of the way that the government is managing policy right at the moment that they're poised to do something. And I think that's where, where everyone's starting to, to think this it could be lining up for a snap election. So there's, it's, it's, it's the murmurings through the public sector uh, that have really um, sort of piqued my interest. And... Um, and you start to have a look at it and you think, yeah, the stars are aligning all right. Um, whether they've got the balls to do it, because it's a very brave political move. Um, but when you look at it, Labor's also gone national light. Um, that they're looking more and more like the National Party every time you look at it. Well, the at, National at, Party at, have been the, looking more and more like the Labor Party, haven't they, Tina? Yeah, they have. And I think, well, you know, at the end of the day, I'm probably still always going to be sort of tribal national 
act. But um, the other thing with with uh, National is, is is I'm worried uh, that they haven't got their act together on the ground. Now you've seen some amazing fundraising efforts by Paula Bennett, but the machinery to choose the new candidates has been very slow um, a- across the nation, and especially in some regional areas where there's been some issues um, around whether new voters uh, or new uh, you know, candidates can be voted for by um, new voters in in the National Party. Uh, so that's caused some delays. So they're not sitting that pretty right at the moment from an organisational point of view either. Yeah, and it would be uh, fair to say... Yeah, and it would be fair to say, I think the change, the well-planned transition of leadership, the policy uh, bonfire um, yep. has left Luxon somewhat flat-footed and National somewhat flat-footed in response. Yeah, and, and, and National needs to pull some aspirational stuff out of their back pocket. There's a bit of talk this morning around tourism and immigration, and it's interesting to see two very big tourism leaders come out this morning and say this government is really, really has, has failed um, the tourist industry. Uh, and so that's where National could grip it up and say, OK, we're going to open the doors, let them in, and, and sort this, this out and, mm. and get tourism back on its feet. Yeah. Uh, because we're not seeing that sort of, uh, you know, good stuff um, coming out of National as fast as it should be. All right. Um, but yeah. That's my concern anyway. Yeah, yeah. Tina, my understanding is that just uh, procedurally um, too late to go in March now. You could yeah, go in... Yeah, April. April. Yeah, okay. Um, but the other thing, and, and, you know, when was the last time we had essentially what you would call a snappy, and I like it, it's a snappy line. Last time we had a snappy, it was Sharp Muldoon. No, I didn't give my opponents much time either. Um, drunk on gin uh, with Sue Wood and Don <laughs> McKinnon there. Um, uh, and, and he got thumped. It was the international for a long time. It was the rise of the Longy Labour government and a huge time of change. Um, he had an excuse. He had nothing like a parliamentary majority. He was relying on um, uh, turncoat uh, traitor uh, Norm Kirk's son, who was a drunkard as well, um, to prop up his government after Marilyn Waring uh, walked. What possible mm. excuse could Labor have? And this is my question. This is the only part, I think, where the theory falls down. I, I agree with you that with the polls where they are now, the bounce they've got, Labor and uh, National in disarray, now would be the perfect time for an election to get a new mandate for, for Labor. But when you've got a parliamentary majority, what possible ex- excuse can you give the electorate for holding an early election? That's the, that's the million-dollar question, and, and even, the, even the public servants don't seem to know what that would be just that there's something, there's moves afoot, something's afoot. That's pretty much what okay. everyone's saying. In that. No, and, I mean, I, mean, I so think he could justify it. Should he say, I want my own mandate to do my own thing. But the mm. other thing is, Tina, they haven't dealt with, they haven't axed three waters. They haven't dealt substantively with co No, and I'm governance. really seriously, I am seriously worried about the three water stuff because they've, they've done this sort of pol- policy bonfire, but they've sort of pulled everything out of the ashes before it's completely um, uh, cindered. Yeah. So you, you've got um, even Robertson as, as, as late as yesterday saying that, you know, there's this insurance schemes just being reworked. Well, three waters and needs to be more than reworked. And if they're going to use co-governance as the, as the sort of the poster child for changes to three waters and everything will be hunky-dory, well, that's, a, that's not good. Because simply the, the structural issues within the three waters reforms are the problem. The co-governance can be fixed actually quite easily, but the, the problem with the three waters in my mind has never ever been the co-governance issues. It's it's a, it's it's around the financing and um, and the lack of um, communities um, being able to ex- a- access the decision making process and the late inclusion of the economic regulator and how long it's going to take uh, for the uh, regulator to be able to foist its powers on the four entities, uh, three in, uh, the four entities to make sure yeah. that they uh, deliver without costing the ratepayers too much. Yeah. But I think everyone has seen after these floods um, that we need to do something. I've always been a reformist. It's just that these reforms are the worst um, yeah. possible 
um, a, a solution. Yeah, how are things over well, in the Rapatina, weather-wise? Um, it's rained steadily all night. Um, we literally, this time last year, we had probably the biggest flood. We've That's had right, we had the big storm. Here. Yep. Yeah, where we watched what we call river dragons, which were just basically old logs um, uh, floating down the, the, the river. And uh, I don't think we're going to get to that um, this time. We've only probably got another six hours of good, steady, heavy rain. Um, it could be, but there will be localised uh, flooding in the wider upper, and it looks that it looks like that will mainly happen on the east coast. And Riversdale and Riversdale South got um, munted last time um, in the floods just a few weeks ago, uh, and so they'll they'll be they'll be really worried about this. So yeah. the majority of the damage is likely to come on the eastern side of the wider upper. Yeah. Um, Tina, all right, look, I don't mind your theory and I don't mind publishing it because, as I say, it, it accords with some of the stuff I've been hearing inside the Beltway. I think the big problem is what justification do you have for an early election? Yeah. Um, but I do not doubt, having seen the ruthless efficiency with which uh, Jacinda Ardern was dispatched by the Labour Party, um, uh, they are pole-driven and, and, and don't think they've given up or there's no gas in the cat tank. This is a very canny administration with some real political um, thinkers in it. Uh, yeah, they're know, useless I, at running a government, but they're bloody good at winning elections. Yeah, OK. So, Tina, should we, should we, should we, what do we wager on this? I'm 50-50. I think the chance is 50-50. My Twitter poll suggests the public think it's 38% to 62. Um, yep. What sort of forfeit are you prepared to put up to me to say you're right? I reckon it's about 60%. I, I think it's definitely in their frame. Uh, and it, it'll be a case of the ducks will, ducks will line up, and if they do, then boss, that'll be it. Okay, so what, is this lunch? Oh, definitely lunch. It's always lunch, Sean. Okay, <laughs> it's lunch. It's lunch. Uh, if it happens, when do you think? It's going to be announced in what, in the next four weeks? Yeah, I reckon it'll be in the next four weeks and um, there'll be a date in um, April. So, uh, yeah, and, and I'm a bit like you, I had to do a bit of investigation as to, ha as to ha how you can do it and when you can do it and when you can't. So it has to be in that window. All right, Tina, um, nothing wrong uh, with uh, floating a boat, running something up the flagpole and see if it flutters. And I do have a strange niggling suspicion I might be buying you lunch. Um, sorry for disturbing you so early. I will let you get back to the uh, wild and wet wire wrapper. Thank you, Sean. Have Cheer a good day. Cheers. Uh, that's Tina Nixon. Now, her column is going to be up later this morning on our um, opinions page on the platform app. And, of course, uh, that interview, uh, that'll be available through our social... Some of it will be available through our social media channels. And the full interview available, of course on the replay of my show, which will be available at about 10.30 this morning if you are a Platform Plus member and it costs you bugger all, $3 a week, $13 a month uh, for Platform Plus and more and more of you getting on, on board and online and doing that. Okay, so a snap election. I'd love to hear through you text, your text what you think. And I would say in some ways a snap election is justified because we do not have the government that we had... Um, three year, two and a half years ago. It has changed its agenda. All the conditions of the country have changed. Uh, I think Chris Hipkins would be justified in asking for a new mandate. And I think that things can only go downhill from here for Labor because they are going to have to either deal with three waters and co-governance or not. Uh, well, they can't expect, expect Chris Luxon to be sitting there like a possum in the headlights forever going, oh, gosh, Labour have got a new leader. He's not Jacinda Ardern. Uh, what do we do? What do we do, uh, the National Party st uh, saying? So I think by October, I think Labour's lost the lead that it created with the change of leadership. So uh, if I was Labour, I'd be looking for a reason and how to create a snap election. Um, and presuming that they've been working on this, the other thing is they are ready to go, they would be ready to go in a campaigning sense. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? And another simple question, would you like to have an early election? Do you think we need to get all this rubbish sorted out and set the direction of a, the country, either we're going woke and broke or not? That's kind of the question I think the, the, the country has to ask itself.